Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second episode here with Unity of Command Black Turn. Yes, indeed, we're back to Unity of Command as promised. We're ready now to take on Army Group Center. We moved on from south. Now we're going to take on the center of things. We'll be taking on path here through Brest Litovsk. Right around here, we'll be taking on Pinsk, Bialystok, Baranovici, and Minsk. Yes, indeed, it'll be a bit of a tour de force through parts of Poland and the Ukraine was at Belarus. My geography of Eastern Europe was never that grand, so my apologies. The forces arrayed towards me are great, numerous, and panzered. Lots of panzer divisions in the north featuring lots of panzer 38Ts. One gentleman wanted to point out that a lot of the German tanks were Panzer 1s and 2s. Not quite. Not quite. They had actually quite an awful lot of Czechoslovakian tanks as well. About 25% were actually Czechoslovakian Panzer 38Ts. Little fun fact there. And the rest would have largely been Panzer 3s or 4s. Also, a bunch of motorized divisions. The Schutzen. Achtung. A few security divisions here. Additional Panzer divisions. I'll get one. SS motorized. Yeah. And I got a cavalry division. The first time I played through this mission, apparently it wasn't in, but now I've got cavalry. And yes, the Germans did actually use cavalry. In fact, they used it throughout the war to different varying degrees. And I believe at a later stage, they actually even had two SS cavalry divisions which fought around Hungary, amongst other places, and didn't do so well there. I believe they got crushed at Budapest. But, little fun fact there for those that did not know. As always, I aim to educate and entertain. Also available are bridges. Yes, indeed, bridges. And a bit of air attack here, which you can note. I can sort of call in on different targets. Some will have less grand odds of succeeding, generally depending on their defensive positions. If they're entrenched, for example, my aircraft will be less effective. And of course, air entrenched units are the ones with a little orange marker with what looks like a pickaxe. And of course, something in a town is also bad. Generally, you'd want to be careful actually about calling air support in and any unit holding out in the city because there's a chance you'll blow up the city. Only making it easier for the defenders to hold it. That's what the Germans found out after they were moved into Stalingrad, after having bombed the Grad out of Stalingrad. So that's something vital to remember. Sometimes you want to sort of target the units around the city. For the Russians, though, we've largely got infantry, tank divisions, motorized rifle divisions, and a few cavalry divisions themselves, though surprisingly few. The Russians are surprisingly mobile in this one. Of course, we've still got the infamous Brest-Litovsk, which took the Germans, I believe it was a month to clear out, and I've got two turns to do it. Let's have at it. Overall, also noting, of course, there's supply lines that are largely running around the railroad here, so essentially if I can get somehow get past here and cut them off, I can actually cut off a large part of the central front, which is actually something I'd rather like to do. Or at least, i like to attempt to succeed in. That's already one sort of sub objective I've set myself. Since certainly if I can catch them out of supply, that's going to make things a lot bloody easier. Of course, I have my armor set up here for a pincer movement for here and here. Though of course, the trees will certainly make it difficult. Weather is on my side. Yes, indeed, weather makes a thing. If there's all sudden heavy rain and you get the Rasputitsa, in which case your tanks will not be moving very fast. In fact, nothing will. And it also becomes easier for your opponent to defend. So that's another little thing there. Though, for the first part of black turn, that's not really going to be relevant. It's going to be much more difficult once the year progresses and sort of get closer to Moscow. Then it's really going to get a pain in the ass. But I'm going to initiate here from the south. Infantry divisions will be crossing here. Leasing an assault here on these entrenched gentlemen. And there we go. Success for Germany. I can sort of push ahead with the panzer divisions, but I think I will have the cavalry lead the way. And uh, there again, they managed to overrun. They did suffer a bit of supply losses overall. You can sort of see it here on this little thing, what sort of projected losses you are. If it's a red cross or orange cross, it's an actual casualty. If it's a white cross, you basically just get units out of supply. And so there again, we see experience bonus helps. They, on the other hand, are entrenched, so that helps them. And there you can see intense of strength and defensive strength. They're about equal, so there's sort of some losses on both sides. I'm not going to push on with the assault, at least not right away. 
Rather, what I think I'll do is try and get my panzers up here using forced movement, which some people had complained I didn't use much of, which is quite fair. So there we go. Panzers ahoy. And again, there we note, I'll suffer a lot of casualties on the other hand. I might be able to just leave them a bit depleted, which could open up for further assault. Then, of course, the question is, do I want to use my infantry units on that? That is one of those little questions you'll have, of course, to keep in mind. I'd rather like to open up the path here, so I'll be moving up my veteran infantry divisions across the river, because no one was guarding it. That largely did not go as successfully as it hoped. I could launch them, and again, no, uh, even though they're veteran, even though they're much stronger, the fact that I have to attack across a river and they're entrenched is generally not the best recipe for a successful assault. Then again, no, I can't push those up. Then again, I can push up this Panzer Division, which otherwise would not be able to push through. That might open up things here a bit, and there we go. All of a sudden, there's progress, but then, as you might be noticing here, they're rather dug in. So I'm going to be pulling in this gentleman. Of course, I'd also like to point out this. Some people have been asking you about recruiting. There's not really any recruiting here. You sort of basically get resources allocated. You've got the force pool, which is basically what high command gives you. Then you've got the reserve, which you have to pay with the prestige and, you know, the cool factor. For example, here I can attach some engineers for 200 prestige, which then, of course, gives them some nice stuff for dealing out with the units dug in. So, just for sort of... Showing off sake, I'll just attach them here. You'll note it is grayed up, which means they are not quite available. They need to get a bit supplied before they're ready to move out and do some stuff. So you can't, for example, just pop it right away and use, use it right away. You need to sort of wait a turn, which also means you can't be too aggressive with it, because if your unit is out of supply, you can't really do much with it. So that is vital to keep in mind. We're popping up here. On the other hand, I can actually do something there. And the defenders of Brest-Livtovsk hold on, thanks to their NKVD training, but all of a sudden the fact that I've managed to breach them makes it easier for my following Panzer Division then to have a bit of fun. And then I can follow up with the Infantry Division here, which takes a bit of a beating. Which of course is less fancy. But we follow up here quickly with a punch from another Infantry Division. And they suffer a bit more. But, already here, Brest-Litovsk has been seized. Glory to Germany. I'm quickly rushing ahead here with as many motorized units as I can possibly muster. Breaching the river Bug. Bug. Sadly again, my Polish is not that great either. Which might lead to some slightly great Polish people. I've certainly had a few problems with some who seem to take it very offensively. There we go, pushing ahead along the centre front line. Doing alright here. Got a security division, a few there. Can't really do much with them. Although I suppose I could free them up as replacements for other divisions, which you can do as well. Then again, I might want to keep them there just in case. across here, lots of infantry, double time it, you basically do this by pressing space, then you can basically say, you know, I don't want you to attack, I just want you to move farther. Different units sort of get more out of it, for example, I mean, a cavalry division get two plus out of it, tank divisions get more of it, motorized infantry less so, so there's sort of also different benefits to doing it. Of course, I've still got this tank unit here, I don't think I'll bother with that, since I'll just wait for it to sort of bleed out slowly. Or at least there's something else to it. As you can see, I'm making good progress here in the south. Deutschland prevails. Actually seems to have gone a lot better than last time. Got the north front as well. I'll be trying here to push through their defensive lines. and allow my panzers to speed through. The faster the merrier. And my security troops even manage to kill there. Not really much they can do. I... Nope. All looks 
spend it there. Pushing up here. Hoping for a bit of fun. I might as well call in some air support. Hoping in. There we go. One kill. Even breaching them. Let's take a major assist in a northern assault and penetration of the Soviet lines. I'm pushing in here. Quickly all running one division. The Russians are obviously, as you might be noticing, having a bit of a hard time at the moment. Of course, at the same time, I need to sort of link up here with the railways myself, otherwise I can't keep up this assault for the long, since, as you might be noticing, that's a lot less good and good transport terrain. That is largely it for my first turn. I've breached the northern, southern parts of the Soviet front line, and they currently don't really have a lot of reserves to stop me with. Of course, they've got plenty of tank divisions to throw into my way, but even they will have their limits. Of course, there might be Soviet reinforcements on the way. Hoorah. Also, motorized divisions were rather different. I mean, later they became the Panzer Grenadier Division, but initially, I mean, they were pretty much only truck and They didn't even have any tanks or assault guns like the pre later on Panzer Grenadier Divisions would have. It's a little fun one there. They were basically there just to keep up with the Panzer Division and act as the defensive element there. Sort of closing off bits. Guarding flanks and providing support. More or less. Tank divisions running about here. Cavalry division far over here, causing a bit of havoc. Who rallying about? There we go. I'm sending up to defend the Bialystok. I'm digging in here and there, trying to guard the way to Pinsk as well. Which I'm pretty sure I can capture pretty quickly. You move forwards the fifth turn. Fancy that. There we go, tank division slowly trying to creep out of there. Comrades, we are surrounded! There are fascists everywhere! And there we go, I get a Leia motorized division. Fun fact about the lair, that was rather one of the Germans' approaches to training. Or, well, more specifically, the training units. And you might be wondering, well, what specifically are you talking about, you crazy person? Well, generally, the Germans, of course, had all their training schools, but then occasionally the Germans would figure, you know, it might be an idea if we actually updated our curriculum. The German way of doing it was basically taking all of the instructors, or at least a bunch of them, and sending them to the front line. Not what you usually hear about. How is it, ladies and gentlemen? I'm just trying to sort those buggers out. And for example, here you got the Lea motorized unit. There usually was a pioneer battalion or infantry to do that battalion that would be sort of pulled in for that. Rather than like to deal with this in a most swift and efficient manner. So of course I obviously got to clear out this traffic jam. Of the considerably less jammy kind. There we go. That's that sorted. Perhaps not the most humane thing to do, but it had to be done. And there we go, we actually get the Rasputitsa right around here, and all of a sudden might be noticing again. Oh hey, mud. Not so cool. And rather than negate to a larger extent my veterancy benefits. So I'm actually going to have to require a lot more force to sort that out. But this time I'm willing to do it simply because I can actually much quicker clear out an entire line of advance. Just 
just going to sort this out as well, ensure there are no fiends sneaking about here on my flank. Also, love a much swifter advance overall. Hmm. Right, we're going to become replacements for some unit. For all I know, you're going to end up in the SS, which I'm sure they'll be most ecstatic about. And again, as you might be noticing, everything just moves slow around this point due to the mud and rain. That's of course something you sort of have to try and keep in mind as much as feasibly possible. Obviously there are extents to what you can do about it. Though forced marches do help quite a bit, but there we go. Further pressuring through here, despite rain and mud, the Blitzkrieg cannot be stopped. Sort of. Continuing through here, cutting off the supply lines there. Units destroyed. Supply lines cut. Supply lines cut. And supply lines cut. And as you might be noticing, I'm about to run out of supplies myself there. Of course, at the same time as I'm doing all of this, I need to begin sort of opening up the railway through here, which really necessitates me having the Arlestock under my control. Otherwise, it's going to be a bit awkward soon. Looks like those gentlemen have decided to abandon ship. Figured I might get in a bit of an extra strike there. For the good of Germany. Something like that. Anyways. So there we go. Good progress made. The northern front line has largely collapsed. South as well. If the Russians want a chance, they are going to have to bring in a lot of reinforcements to stop this Blitzkrieg. Obviously, they seem rather unprepared. Still, there's going to be some issues here and here. And then again, largely my issues currently will be about clearing up Bialystok and then Baranovich and ensuring the supplies can keep rolling. In fact, I'm already going to be running into issues here to again, largely to the supplies being having a lot of trouble getting through all the mud. Yay. But, end the turn. Now we see Russian reinforcements are arriving. Motorized divisions, tank divisions being rushed in. There we go. <laughs> Doing its best to bog down my pants as that vicious AI. How dare he! Oh, I also need to take the road to Bruisk. Rather miss that one. Awkward. But there we go, all of a sudden I've got five available. That is from that security division. Which I rather decided had better purposes. Reaching through here. Cavalry division in a bit of trouble, tank division much more so. Hmm, old need to be taking better you now. Yeah, you know, that might not happen. Too slow there, I'm afraid. But 
I shall be racing ahead like the wind. Mark though has quickly cleared up, allowing for much speedier progress. Much to my intense joy. There we go. Supply routes for the Panzers all being sorted. With the swift fall of Bialystok. Whatever stock. Need to see which one I can deal the most decisive blow to. Quick overrun there. Allows me to all of a sudden shatter a lot of Russian units in short succession. Which is rather what I was looking for, actually. That's grand. Go. Continue its swift advances. Slightly sad I could not take Baranachi faster, though. I suppose I should have shifted more units towards the centre, or at least tried to be a way around. Ah, uh, well. I got caught up in that traffic jam again. I rather had hoped to avoid another Monty. So there is that. Oh, well, they can't march any further. Poor devils. So there we go. I've largely expended everything in a glorious attempt to push forwards. There we go. Getting a bit more out of those, gentlemen. And st oh, wait, I can still call in some air support. Now, who's data ruin? How about you? Obviously, didn't have much effect since he obviously got resupplied. But you never know. Might have gotten a kill. Pop the arrow bridge here. Cavalry securing a town there. Maybe here. Clearing out the infantry. There we go. Swift advances is what we like. Or at least I like. Vilnius. So there we go, good progress made. Achtung, achtung. All that. Not really a lot left for the infantry to do, they're just sort of left behind going, yeah, well, that was a fun war. What now? Go ending again. Tank division slightly rolling back. Also, some gentlemen commenting on the whole. You know, I said most of the divisions were composed of T26s. They were. They had some other heavy tanks, but overall, the T35 series uh, wasn't that grand. It had a lot of flaws, things like that. But largely, I mean, they were composed of the T26s. Most of the T34s, for example, were concentrated up in Army Group North, and overall, they did end up still losing most of them. The thing about was still, you know, they had a lot of tanks, but they also lost them. Different reasons, but, you know, partly also due to the fact that they really weren't in that good of condition. A 
There we go. Minsk has been taken. And ultimately the 226 wasn't, you know, that great of a tank. It was rather lightly armoured. And of course they had the KV-1s and the KV-2s, and they had not a lot of them. Which ultimately limited what much you can do to stop up the German advance. I mean, yes, a KV-1 in several cases, you know, stopped up an entire German column for days, but... Even that has its limits. Oh, I forgot all about the Leer. How unfortunate. Of course, though, it's later on be the Panzer Leer Division, which of course was formed when I believe it was Guderian pretty much went, you know, we have all of these great instructors, maybe we should just, you know, form an elite Panzer Division and try to win the war that way. Yeah? There we go! Victory! No, not Ura, but yeah. So there we go, a bit of a quick match here. Hopefully I'll explain some more things. Hopefully I'll also get you more historical insight. Sort of things I love doling out on. Hopefully if you weren't inspired for four to get the game, you know, you feel free to do so again. I'll put the links in the description. You, I believe, I'm not sure if you can still get it, but you can basically get the game otherwise cheaper on the developer site, unitycommand.net, where he's also offering up the primary game, the only thing you need to play, Black Turn. At a discount where you can basically get it less under ten dollars, so there's you know not much reason not to get it if you're you know excited about this. Again, fun turn based strategy game, sort of takes away most of the for me tedious stuff and lets me focus on actual strategy and blowing up communists. Which is for me are two vital things. Plus I just overall like this graphical style, very, you know, minimalistic but still very interesting. Plus German cavalry. Oh, so fun. And so neglected. So, this is Imperial Danish saying cheers. If you'd like to see more, of course, let me know in the comments. I'll keep making more of these as long as there are missions. Otherwise, feel free to share with your friends and all the networks. Like it, whatever you'd like to do. This is Imperial Danish saying cheers.